Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. You are maybe building some kind of app or you may be planning to build an app. And when building an app, there are a gazillion different ways how you could achieve that. You could build two separate native apps for iOS and Android. You could use cross-platform framework like Flutter or like React Native. Or you could use something like Kotlin Multiplatform. If you may be already following me for a while, then you know that Kotlin Multiplatform is definitely a thing that I'm focused on because my channel is all about Kotlin. But still, I would not generally recommend Kotlin Multiplatform, but only if some of certain scenarios apply to your situation. And in this video, I will go over the exact scenarios where I would say definitely build your app on Kotlin Multiplatform, but I will also go over the scenarios where I think it's maybe not the right pick for you. And I will keep myself very short, so let's dive right into it. Scenario number one is you already tried Kotlin as a programming language and you just like it. Obviously, because Kotlin multi-platform is in the end the only cross or multi-platform framework that allows you to build apps for all platforms with Kotlin. And I always say if a developer really truly enjoys the work they are doing, then that alone will yield a better result than working with a technology you don't enjoy that much. Scenario number two, and here we really get to the most important advantages Kotlin Multiplatform has over all these other cross-platform frameworks like Flutter and React Native. You are a native Android developer or you work in a team of native Android developers. If that is the scenario you find yourself in, so if you understand native Android development with Kotlin, then building your first apps for iOS as well with Kotlin multi-platform takes you maybe one to two weeks of adoption. Because if you think about it, you are using the same language, you are using the same IDE, the same paradigms to build Kotlin multi-platform apps that you also use for a native Android development, and possibly even the same UI framework, Jetpack Compose. Really, the only learning curve here comes from the different project structure a Kotlin multi-platform project has. And in my experience, you can really just perfectly learn that on the fly when needing it. So for example, you notice during development, hey, I actually need to show a notification on the iOS side. Then that is the point where you can just dive into that, ask AI, research a bit. And with that knowledge, you can implement that fairly easily in your Kotlin multi-platform project. But other than that, if you are already familiar with native Android development, the learning curve for KMP is super small compared to technologies like Flutter or React Native, where you would maybe have to learn a completely new technology from scratch that has different paradigms, that uses different ideas and is built around different ideas. And this is also what I think is really the biggest advantage here of Carta Multiplatform, that there's already such a large group of developers, so all the native Android developers, who can suddenly build native iOS apps with it as well without having to learn any complex other topics they aren't already familiar with. Scenario number three, where I would definitely recommend Carta Multiplatform is, you have an existing native Android app and you now want to migrate step by step. So it could of course be that you are maybe in a company and you currently have separate native teams, one for native iOS development and one for native Android development. And here comes what makes Carta Multiplatform really unique. It's called multi-platform and not cross-platform. Cross-platform means that you have a single code base that runs identically across platforms. While multi-platform means that you have shared code with platform-specific implementations where necessary. What this means is that Kotlin multi-platform allows you to write truly native code in a very modular way. So just for what you need. So you're really not forced to rebuild your entire application from scratch with Kotlin multi-platform. If you have existing native apps for Android and iOS, then you can now extend these two existing code bases with Kotlin multi-platform and start sharing code for just the new features while leaving the rest natively in Swift for iOS and Kotlin for Android. So KMP is really the only framework here out of all these other viable ones like Flutter, React Native and so on that allows you to take existing code bases as they are and just extend them with shared code. So the, the extensions you just have to define once, but you can still use and facilitate what you already have. Because with KMP, you can really define, hey, that is a part that I want to implement natively in Swift for iOS, that I want to implement natively for Android. And this is maybe a part of the project that I want to share with Kotlin. And with that advantage, we also get to the next advantage or the next scenario where I would recommend KP4. And that is if parts of your app are really performance critical. And I really don't want to make the claim here that KMP apps generally have the same performance as an equivalent truly native app. But my point is that with KMP apps, you have the option to give parts of your app true native performance and just those where you need it. Because again, you can decide to implement certain parts of your code base truly natively in native language, in Swift, in Kotlin for Android. So you can write the native code for just those features that are performance critical. So for example, you have a very complex screen that is performance critical. What you can then do with KMP is you can build its UI with native UI widgets in native language with a native performance, while then maybe sharing the UI for less complex screens. 
And that is something that is rather untypical in Flutter apps, for example, and also doesn't work the same way as on KMP there. And the last scenario where I would clearly recommend KMP in is if your app, or at least parts of your app, require complex platform-specific API access. Due to Kotlin multi-platform being multi-platform with the definitions I just gave you, that allows you really the, the easiest customization of platform-specific code, since you can, on the one hand, easily write it yourself in native language, and then also call these native platform APIs directly without any sort of bridge layer. So if you call a system API from your Kotlin multi-platform code, that call is being made directly on the system API, for example, on the iOS side. If you show, show a notification, then from Kotlin, you can directly invoke the function from the iOS notification manager equivalent, rather than Kotlin having to serialize this message somehow, sending this through some kind of bridge that translates that to an iOS call, where there's always a little bit of overhead. This is, for example, how Flutter works with these so-called platform channels. Nowadays, that's also well optimized on the Flutter side, but in KMP, it's still the easiest to really work with these platform-specific APIs directly, because the entire framework is built that way, in this modular way. However, there are still a few scenarios where I would say, hey, KMP is probably not the right pick for your app. And that also at least yet, because KMP is still in development. And while it's stable for Android and iOS, there is still a lot to improve there and a lot for JetBrains to work on. And on the one hand, that is if you require a large pool of established libraries. So while KMP already does have cool libraries, but if we honestly compare it with frameworks like Flutter, there is still a huge gap, and especially in regards to established libraries that have been battle tested in production over years. And that's simply due to KMP being a bit fresher than something like Flutter or React Native. Another scenario where I would not recommend KMP in is if there is simply no Kotlin expertise in your team, because then it does have quite a significant learning curve, because then you not only need to learn Kotlin as a language in your team, but also introduce the team to all these Android specific paradigms that have been translated to Kotlin multi platform. So for example, view models and lifecycle and so on, which are mostly Android specific concepts, but in KMP, they also apply to the shared code. So if your team really does not know Kotlin at all, and you're maybe in a situation where you just want to build an app for both platforms from scratch, then at this point, you may be better off with a framework like Flutter, which you would also have to learn from scratch probably. But there are on the one hand, more resources out there. There are more established libraries out there where you don't have to write that platform specific code for two platforms. And it's just more mature overall at this point. The last scenario where I would not recommend KMP for at this point at least, is if you need to support web. So if web is one of your targets, you want to have a website, then while KMP allows you that nowadays and also Compose multi-platform that does exist for web, but it's still very early. In that case, I would probably also rather think about something like Flutter, which also allows you to build for web or alternatively wait a little bit because at some point this will likely become stable for Kotlin multi-platform as well and then be a very viable pick. But I'm actually very curious about your experience. Have you maybe already built a KMP app? Have you already published this to production? What are your experiences with it? Maybe also comparing it with other frameworks you've worked with? Let us know that down below. And if KMP is something you want to learn, then I will also link my new Kotlin full stack developer bundle below in which you will really build a full stack KMP chat application over 56 hours of video content. Check it out. Thanks for watching and I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.